A viewer named Trent tried to fix his son's PS5, but when he got it all back together, it didn't work. Let's find out what he did wrong and then see if I can fix it. This is the box that they sent. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. Now I did open this just to confirm that there was PS5 parts in here, but I didn't look at the whole thing to see what was going on with it. Okay, there is a PS5 in here. That's a lot of box for this PS5, but uh, here's the other problem. It also came like this. There's just a big hole in it with a piece of tape over it and USPS saying they received it damaged. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure the I'm sure you did receive it damage after you guys damaged it. Anyway, let's take a look and see what this PS5 looks like. Hopefully that's not bug parts right there. That would be unfortunate. Okay, and we do have a PS5 and HDMI port. I mean, from the outside looks good, but obviously uh not working. So let's actually plug this in and see if it connects to my TV and then we'll go from there. Okay, do we have power? Power to the disk drive. Console is powering up. Blue light. If the console is working but it's just an HDMI issue then it will show a white light along here and it actually does show a white light. And we just have white light with a black screen. So that is an indication that there's a problem with the HDMI system. Let's get this apart and see what's going on. This is the email that I got from Trent. My son's PS5, which I've had since 2020, and gave it to him so he could play some sports games he loves, has been on the fritz for a couple months, but the other day it stopped displaying anything on numerous screens. It had been connecting off and on, and I would have to plug it in and unplug the HDMI cord a few times, and it would work, but it finally went out. After watching your videos, oh sure, just blame it on me. After watching your videos, I decided to try and fix the HDMI port by replacing it. I put it in, got everything back together, but that didn't fix the problem, and it's still doing the same thing. Best wishes, Trent. Okay, and now with this apart, I can say that I'm actually pretty impressed overall with the fact that there is no torn ribbon cables or anything like that. None of the connectors are taken off the board. There are a few screws that's missing, but other than that, this is looking great so far. Now the liquid metal, there's definitely a problem there. I can see like there was like some hairs or something in here. And also there's just not enough liquid metal. We've got three dry spots right here, kind of a dry spot all the way around here. So we definitely need to deal with that. But the HDMI port is what we're here for. Let's take a look at that. All right, and I can immediately see what I think is the probably the problem. Actually, I see two problems with this. One problem is these mounting pins are just, there's just not enough solder there. There's a little hole there little hole there, so that's definitely a problem. The other problem though is when I take my pick along in these pins, you can see almost all of them, actually probably all of them move. So while the port is definitely installed, all of these little pins aren't connected to where they need to be connected. Other than that, I think this probably is gonna work fine. So what I'm gonna do is actually just come in and solder all of these little legs down and then I will also re-solder these mounting pins. And then after that, we'll try it out and see if that's all it takes to get this thing working. So the first thing I'm gonna do is bring some flux and flux up all of these little pins over here. That's gonna ensure that when I bring the solder over, the solder is gonna, gonna flow really well. So that's what I'm gonna do next. My soldering iron is hot. Let's get my fume extractor turned on and let's get some soldering done. Okay, now I'm gonna clean these pins all up and we'll take a look and we'll test the joints just to make sure they're nice and strong and then we'll get these mounting pins soldered down. Now that we've got that port and all the pins cleaned off, let's just push on each one gently, but also firmly. We wanna make sure these things are soldered on nice and solidly. So far, so good. And none of them move at all. So now that that's done, let's get these mounting pins soldered on correctly. So here we can see not the prettiest solder soldering ever, but also, I mean, it mostly kept this port in place. So overall, Trent, I think you actually did a pretty good job. There's a couple key things that you missed, but overall you didn't do a ton of extra damage or anything. So I would say you actually did a pretty good job. If you would have been able to solder the pins on on the back of this port, this would have worked just fine 
I think. It is possible we have some other problems here, but let's get these pins soldered on correctly and then we'll check that out. So what I'm gonna do is add a lot of flux to these pins and then I'm gonna bring my largest soldering iron over and I'm gonna put a ton of heat on these because this is a big thick board and it's gonna take a lot to get that solder to melt correctly. All right, let's start right over here. You can see it's melting, but it is taking a while. I actually might also remove some of this solder because there's a lot of solder on these joints. Okay, I'm actually gonna do that now. Let's get some of this solder removed. There's just way too much on here. I'm using some solder wick. This will wick up the excess solder as we're going here. And it's taken a while because there's just, this is a very large ground plane. So it takes a while to heat up and it just soaks up a lot of heat. So, okay, I'm gonna add more flux. We're getting a little dry there. Okay, now I'm just reheating these joints. Try and make them look as good as we can. It's not gonna look great. This is just one big ground plane back here. So it's only only gonna look so good. I don't know that this really looks any better than when I started, but I know that these joints are better. We've heated them up way more than they were. And the mounting pins, you can barely see in here. They're nicely incorporated with solder. So I think that's about as good as we're gonna get for the bottom side. Let's try and do some work on the top side. Then I'll come in with a little bit of fresh solder and solder it down on this leg right here. There we go, that's getting to be what we want it to look like. Same over here. The thing that this will do too is as we heat this pin up, it'll actually suck some of the solder from the bottom side that we were just working on, as long as we get it hot enough. Okay, that is looking a lot better for those. Now to get to the front mounting pan, I'm gonna come over on this side. Need to add some flux here. Okay. You can see that solder melt. And then the other side, and again, the key here is having an iron that'll get really nice and hot. This is a really good quality Hako iron, and you can tell even it's having a problem heating this up enough. So if a good quality one is having a problem, then a subpar quality one just isn't gonna do the job. Give that a cleaning. We wanna get all this flux off as much as possible because it can get inside the port and make it all sticky in there and create a bad connection with the HDMI cable. So we're just gonna clean it all up as much as we can. Okay, and that's looking pretty good. Now let's deal with that liquid metal. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is just see how oxidized this APU is. So I'm rubbing this woven cotton swab over it and you can see it's just kinda of dark right there. So that's all oxidation on the APU. If I put it back together like this, it's probably just gonna overheat right away. So what we need to do first is clean that all off. I'm gonna use a regular cotton swab and some isopropyl alcohol and come through and rub pretty hard on this as I go. And that's just gonna rub that oxidation right off. Now you can see we've got an area that's got a lot more oxidation. Most of the time, my cotton swab with IPA will actually get that off pretty well, but in this case, it's still not coming off. So what I'm gonna use is a fiberglass pen and we're just gonna go right over it, just like this. Not putting a ton of pressure, but just enough to get in there and get that off a little bit better. Okay, we've almost got it already. Okay, and we've got a little bit of it there still, but it's almost totally gone, and that's totally good enough to reapply the liquid metal. Now that we're ready to reapply the liquid metal, I'm gonna take a liquid metal syringe and suck up all of this liquid metal around the edge, put it right on the chip. We've got a bunch of it in, in the sponge material. So we'll try and get all of that out as much as I can. So we don't need it up there, we need it down on the chip. And with that down on the chip, we'll spread it around just like this. 
See how nicely that's spreading on the clean chip? There we go, that's what it's supposed to look like. Okay, that's pretty good for that side of it. Now we need to do the heatsink side. And pretty much the same process here. We'll start with a cotton swab soaked with isopropyl alcohol. Just rub off all of this oxidation. And you can see we kind of have the same marks right here. So we'll get our fiberglass pen out. And again, this isn't gonna get it perfect, but it'll get it pretty good. I mean, that's most of it. There's still a little bit left there, but this is enough that it's gonna work just fine. We don't need to get 100% of it off. I don't need to make sure and clean this really well and clean up anything that the fiberglass pen left behind. Now we can suck up all this liquid metal off the edge, put it back up on the heat sink. Oh, I found some of that hair. Probably not showing up very good on camera, but got it. Okay, now the other thing we want to do is clean up all of this li liquid metal off of this black part right here. Because once there's liquid metal in a place, it's very easy for more to just kind of travel down the same path and get there. And we want all of it up on the chip, or as much as, as much as we can possibly get. Okay, now we'll spread this around. Okay, that's what it's supposed to look like. I'm going to clean off the edges here a little bit more and then we'll get this thing put back together. Now we kind of need to do the same thing along here. I'm gonna clean up as much of this liquid metal as I can. That's looking pretty good. All right, that's definitely a lot of liquid metal work we've done, but it's super important that this step is done right and really important that this APU is not oxidized because that will cause overheating. Now it looks to me like it could use some extra liquid metal, so I'm gonna add some extra liquid metal onto this just to make sure we got enough there. Okay, that should be good. Now we can put the motherboard back on and start building this console. Okay, and I did add some more liquid metal to the APU side, just to make sure we got plenty on here since I don't know the history of this and it's been worked on before and it looked like there was just not enough there. It's not gonna hurt to put some extra there. Okay, now with that done, we can actually start building this PS5. I really hope there's nothing else wrong other than that HDMI port on this. It's going to be annoying to have to take this all back apart again, but I think it's going to work. I have faith. We're almost ready to test it, but first we got to take care of this dark stain on the front. I'm gonna try some isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab and it's coming right up. That's what I like to see. Okay, all hooked up to power, hooked up to my TV. It's powering on, got the blue light. No signal. Oh, here we go. Come on. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, let's test the disk drive real quick. And the disk drive is spinning up as well. So Trent, you might have failed in this repair, but you tried the repair and that's a success in my book. Now you know what to do differently next time and I can tell by the repair you did here that you almost had it and if you try it again, I think you'll get it. If you like this type of video, you'll probably like the video where I tried to fix a PlayStation 4 Pro that a 12 year old tried to fix. I think you might be surprised how good he did. I'll put a link for that video up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see how well a 12 year old did. Thanks so much for watching today and I hope you have a good one.